You know, this is, uh, this is part of the game, right? And if you're going to compete without steroids, you're going to be at a great disadvantage. Bodybuilding legend and six-time Mr. Olympia winner Dorian Yates cautioned the younger generations about the dangers of steroid use. And when a legend warns you about something, it's better to listen. Let's dive into this. Dorian's own history with steroids. In the past, Dorian Yates has admitted to having used steroids consistently for 12 years, from 1985 until he retired from professional bodybuilding in 1997. While using steroids and other substances helped him in his pro career, Yates has admitted that he faced some side effects as well. During his discussion on the True Jordy podcast, Yates explained the long-term effects of steroids with an example of insulin. So little to what people use now, but still I, it was dramatic because it was the first time I ever touched anything. I was just using steroids up to that point. So the next level was growth hormone. People use insulin in medical contexts. However, bodybuilders use it so that muscles can absorb more nutrients. Dorian Yates said that the long-term negative effects of this heavily outweigh the short-term gains and added that insulin, in combination with other substances, is more likely to take decades off of the user's life. Dorian said, I tell the people that I coach and help now and I advise. I said, look, I'm always honest and I tell you the truth. Yes, I used insulin. Was it positive? In my mind, no, it wasn't because you would start to lose a little bit of quality. Not to mention the negative health effects. Diabetics that use insulin, I think they have like 10 years less life expectancy. So if you're using insulin and steroids and other things altogether, they're becoming a ticking time bomb. Yates' Impact on Bodybuilding Dorian Yates helped to change the way fans and competitors thought about a bodybuilder's physique. From 1992 to 1997, Yates's ever-growing physique brought a new level of muscularity and leanness few had seen before. Though he'd been on the bodybuilding circuit for years prior, 1992 marked Yates' iconic showcase. He ushered in what we now know as the mass monster era. He was lean, muscular, and fierce in his training. Yates's active career was defined by a self-professed monkish existence dedicated to being the biggest, most muscular man on the planet. For those six glorious years, the shadow achieved just that. His combination of size and conditioning was never seen before, and it an astonishing sight. As a six-time Mr. Olympia, Yates arguably did more to shape bodybuilding as a sport than any of his contemporaries. It is unsurprising, then, that he is still held in such high regard by fans. Dorian Yates helped to change the way fans and competitors thought about a bodybuilder's physique. From 1992 to 1997, Yates's ever-growing physique brought a new level of muscularity and leanness few had seen before. Though he'd been on the bodybuilding circuit for years prior, 1992 marked Yates' iconic showcase. The 30-year-old Englishman stepped on stage in the Helsinki Ice Hall in Finland, weighing roughly 260 pounds with conditioning so impressive that people could see his muscle fibers, a level of leanness now known as grainy. Yates was the first bona fide mass monster in bodybuilding. Yates was and continues to be a controversial figure in bodybuilding. He refused to train the way most people trained. He refused to train where most people trained, and he refused to look the way most people looked. His headstrong nature and monkish discipline underpinned his success. Yates moved bodybuilding into the age of the mass monster. No subsequent Olympia has evolved the sport in the same way. Dorian's Opinion on Steroid Use During his recent visit to the True Geordie podcast, Dorian Yates spoke about steroid use and its long-term effects in different contexts. Yates has not opposed steroids as the means of staying healthy for older men, However, he has a different opinion on the rampant steroid use among young people, especially those who are not competing athletes. Considered as one of the greatest bodybuilders in history, Dorian Yates scored six consecutive Mr. Olympia wins from 1992 to 97. Best known for his wide and thick back, Yates holds wins in 15 major competitions and to second place finishes. His six Mr. Olympia wins are fifth most in bodybuilding history behind Lee Haney, eight, Ronnie Coleman, eight, Arnold Schwarzenegger, seven, and Phil Heath, seven. Since his retirement, Dorian Yates has spoken about the downside of steroid use in sports. Dorian Yates's comments might make one think that he is a staunch opponent of steroids, irrespective of the circumstances under which they're used. However, that is not the case. Yates explained that steroids or testosterone replacement therapies are a great way for older men to lead a healthy life. His sole objection with steroid use is aimed at the young generation that resorts to it as the means to make gains and athletes who take more steroids than recommended by medical experts. He said, 
Me personally, my advice to you is unless you're competing, don't take any steroids unless you're like past 40 and your testosterone is low and that's hormone replacement. That's a different story because that's good for your health. If your testosterone is low and you put it back to optimal levels, it has tremendous health benefits. Depression, arthritis, diabetes, heart problems, all these things can be improved by taking testosterone replacement. So in that context, it's very healthy for people. So I started with that and that like enabled me to go to another level over the next few years. Effects of steroids on industry. With the recent sad passings in bodybuilding shocking the community, it's clear that it's time to make a change. Steroid usage in bodybuilding is no new occurrence. Since the golden era, bodybuilders have used foreign substances to help improve their physiques. In the modern era, many competitors take a number of different substances in order to get as massive as possible. While physiques are on an entirely different level these days, the risks to competitors is unlike anything experienced before. So many bodybuilders have passed away because of the massive amounts of gear that they pump into their bodies. The purpose of bodybuilding is to celebrate healthy living and strengthen the body. However, many bodybuilders have passed away at a relatively young age over the last few decades. Dorian Yates highlighted this and said, Your body can't tolerate this kind of stress as you get older. So we're seeing heart attacks and stuff with bodybuilders now in their 40s and 50s. It's always happened since the 90s. There have been a few guys. Steroid use comes with great incentives for people in the fitness, sports, and entertainment industry as it enables them to perform their jobs better. However, a large section of young people and even school-going children are believed to be at least exposed to their use. It is also a noteworthy fact that the risk of using steroids outside professional reasons comes with a great risk with minimal or no benefits in the larger context. Dorian Yates stated that steroid use has not only increased among people that don't even compete, but they're using higher doses than even professional bodybuilders used back in the 1990s. He said, we were using Trenbolone in the form called Parabolin. It came from France in 76 milligrams. I'd probably use two of those a week. Two or three were accepted back then. That would be the maximum, so around 200 milligrams because it's really powerful and a little bit toxic. Guys are coming to me now that don't even compete and say, I'm on 800 milligrams of Trenbolone. The 59-year-old further stated that steroid use is increasing with each generation. Yates argued that although it helps with recovery and gains initially, there comes a point when they don't add any value. Other big names in the bodybuilding have also strong opinions on the use of steroids. At Arnold Classic Africa, seven-time Mr. Olympia Arnold Schwarzenegger discussed the use of performance-enhancing drugs in modern bodybuilding at a seminar. Part of the problem, Schwarzenegger noted, is that these days, the amateur competitors look like the professionals of his era. And while he admitted that the sport's progress over the years has been extraordinary, he expressed concerns about the drug use some athletes feel pressured to supplement with. He said, a lot of people then get the feeling that if they did drugs, then that would enhance their performance. But what happens is if you think that two pills will help you, then there are guys that say, okay, if I take 10, it will be five times as good. Then they go and overdose. It's difficult to get statistics on steroid abuse because it's not something that most national surveys track, but the majority of people who go overboard with anabolic steroids are men in their 20s and 30s who lift, according to the National Institute on Drug Abuse. Whether taken orally, injected into muscles, or used in gel or cream form, steroids to enhance performance are generally taken in doses 10 to 100 times higher than a doctor would prescribe to treat medical conditions. People often see abusing steroids as the easy way to get bigger, but that's not the case according to the Austrian Oak. Schwarzenegger further said, you see people just overdosing and thinking that the answer is a quick shortcut to success, but there is no shortcut to success. It doesn't exist. There's only one way to be successful, and that is to work your ass off. That's all for this video, folks. See you another time.